Well, hey everyone, Ken Catania here, and this movie is a companion to my recent book on the art and craft of doing science. And if you're following along in the book, or if you watched the last video, you'll know I just presented an experiment showing that electric eels can track conductors, and I demonstrated that using this disc that has a single conductor on it, and the rest are plastic visual controls, and the eel was very fast, efficient, and accurate at targeting just the conductive disc, showing that it uses active electroreception with the high voltage as part of its sensory system. And I want to show you that experiment again because, you know, electric eels doing anything are pretty cool, but also afterwards I want to talk about the scientific publication where those results were shown because there is often something missing from scientific publications, and I want to talk about that. Well, I really like that experiment because I think it's kind of cool, I think it's kind of artistic, and it's also especially very definitive in what the electric eel is able to do. And I was able to publish those results along with a bunch of other experiments and related data in Nature Communications, showing that electric eels are using their high voltage as part of a sensory system in addition to a weapon. And so you could say, okay, mission accomplished. I explored a hypothesis and I came out with a definitive result and I went through peer review and I published that. Except there was something missing from that paper. And to tell you what is missing from that paper, I want to turn to the famous scientist and immunologist Peter Medawar, who wrote extensively about the process of doing science, in addition to getting the Nobel Prize. And I want to read you a quote from a provocative paper that he wrote about scientific writing and scientific publications. What he said was, the scientific paper in its orthodox form does embody a totally mistaken conception, even a travesty, of the nature of scientific thought. So what's he talking about? Well, the answer to that gets to the heart of the reason that I wrote the book on the art and craft of doing science in the first place. What Medawar is talking about is the inspiration to do a study, the source of ideas. Where did I get my hypothesis? This is something that is often left out of scientific papers. What is critically wanted in a scientific paper is the hypothesis and then the rigorous test of that hypothesis, but not necessarily the inspiration or source of your ideas. And I am guilty as charged in the case of this paper. For example, let me read you from the introduction to the publication on these results. The possibility that the eel's high voltage discharge plays a sensory role has been overlooked. The experiments described below address this question. It reads as if I sat around thinking harder than any of the other biologists that have studied electric eels before me, and I just thought up, oh, this would be an interesting thing to study. This would be a good experiment. Then I did the study and published my results. But that's not how it happened at all. If you're following along in the book, you probably won't be surprised to know that I got the idea to do these experiments while studying and working on a very different puzzle in electric eels. And I'll just briefly tell you about that. So I was looking at how electric eels attack in response to a water motion, and they do this by giving off their high voltage and striking towards the source of that water motion. And in the course of those studies, I put the target within a plastic bag, and this thin plastic bag completely cloaked the target, the conductive target, from the electric eel. It made it essentially invisible to the eel while the eel was giving off its high voltage. And if you want more details, you can uh, look at the corresponding section in the book. But essentially, because things in a thin plastic bag were cloaked from the electric eel's strike during the high voltage, I thought, oh, maybe it's using the high voltage as part of a sensory system. And then, as a quick and dirty test, I simply added a carbon rod to the experimental setup. And I'm just going to show you briefly that preliminary experiment so that you can see where things started, but also because just about anything an electric eel does is cool, so it's fun to watch. And then I'll tell you a little bit more about the experiments. <laughs> 
So hopefully that gives you the backstory behind where I got the idea, sort of the inspiration. Where did I get my hypothesis in the first place? So why didn't I put that into the scientific publication? The reason is editors are not interested in that sort of messy backstory. In fact, I did just put the sort of origin story for ideas in a different separate paper on an entirely different system. And when I got back the reviews, I was told the introduction was too casual and it needed to be shortened. So this is a very real thing. And I think it's a shame because the problem is, if you're new to science and you're just reading the literature, you're reading these scientific papers, you may get the idea that scientists just sort of sit around thinking about things very hard, come up with these hypotheses, and come up with ideas without interacting with their study system. When in reality, a lot of the best ideas come from collecting data and looking really hard at that data. So why is the process of collecting data such a very, very efficient way for generating new ideas and new hypotheses. Well, despite the very esoteric and unusual nature of experiments on electric eels, I think the lessons can be very general. So what am I talking about here? So I like to make a comparison with professional writers. So professional writers will start with a rough draft. Then they will revise and revise and revise to try to make things more clear. The same thing often goes on in science with experiments. But as is the case with the origin of a hypothesis, this process of revision is often not obvious to the reader of a scientific paper. So I'm going to give you an example of that for the case of the electric eel studies and show you some of the intermediates and the starting points. So I, as you saw, I started with a single carbon rod. Then I moved to a single carbon rod among plastic control visual distractors, and then I moved from that to a single carbon rod on a spinning disc along with other plastic rods as controls. And then I moved from that to discs, in this case a large carbon disc embedded in the bigger disc and plastic distractors for visual controls, but these were fairly big. Then I refined that to make the carbon disc much smaller along with these visual controls. And finally, I ended up with the more elaborate one that I showed you at the end here where hard, I can hardly find the conductor on this myself. And here it is, and these are the plastic inserts that the eel is uninterested in and instead tracks that one conductor. A lot of the versions of the experiments that I just showed you provided useful data, and these were included in the publication. But the lesson here is not about electric eels or these specific experiments. The lesson is that in science, experiments are often revised over time for clarity. And yet this is not always obvious in the publication. And yet that process is a great source of new ideas, in addition to providing you ultimately with more definitive results. And along those lines, I'm going to leave you with another quote from Peter Medawar because he pointed out that experimentation is a form of thinking as well as a practical expression of thought. And I'll leave you with that.